Once you have found a candidate for parenteral nutrition, completed the fluid and macronutrient calculations, and are preparing to begin the infusion, there are a number of precautions that should be taken. These tasks can be completed in any order. One thing you'll need to do is confirm the infusion site as central or peripheral venous access to make sure the formulation you have made is safe to use. You'll also want to start with no more than 200 grams of dextrose per day. This is done to minimize the risk for hyperglycemia, which is the most common metabolic complication of parenteral nutrition. In most cases, you can start with anywhere from 150 to 200 grams, and then increase by 25 to 50 grams per day until the goal amount is reached. In addition to this, you'll need to obtain a capillary blood glucose measurement which is often called a POCT glucose or finger stick. The goal here is to have a value between 140 and 180 milligrams per deciliter. If the baseline value is greater than 200, then it should be corrected with insulin prior to starting the infusion. Other labs you'll want to check are the Basic Metabolic Panel, or BMP, which contains the electrolytes sodium, potassium, and calcium. You'll also want to check magnesium and phosphate, which are not part of the BMP, but are equally important. If any of these are low, you should correct them using IV fluids. The purpose here is to minimize risk for refeeding syndrome. The last two laboratory measurements that should be obtained prior to starting parenteral nutrition are liver function tests, or LFTs, and serum triglycerides. A direct bilirubin of 2 or higher indicates that the liver is having difficulty clearing bile. So, to avoid toxicities, some clinicians will remove trace elements like copper and manganese. An elevated ALT and or AST suggests there is fat accumulation in the liver and so the parenteral nutrition order should be reassessed with possible adjustments made to the total energy load, the carbohydrate load, the type of lipid used, or the number of hours the infusion lasts each day. If the serum triglycerides are greater than 400, then the lipid emulsion should be reduced or removed. Finally, you'll want to obtain a new body weight measurement. This will be helpful to determine if the appropriate energy and or fluid load is being provided once the infusion is started. For example, if the patient's body weight gradually decreases over the first week, it is possible they are at risk for underfeeding. Another example is if the weight rapidly climbs in the first few days. In this case, changes are less likely to be from fat or muscle tissue and more likely to be from fluid shifts from excessive fluid intake. Once all of these tasks are completed and parenteral nutrition has started, you can implement a plan for monitoring. Current standards are to check POCT glucose every 6 hours until stable between 140 and 180 mg per deciliter, Obtain a daily BMP with magnesium and phosphate until the labs are stable. Obtain weekly LFTs and triglycerides. And obtain a daily body weight to start, then reduce the frequency to 1-2 to two times per week. By doing all of these things, you put yourself in the best position to give excellent nutrition care. Thank you for watching. Check out these videos for more content just like this.